Hello and welcome back to today's video. So I hope everyone's been enjoying their holiday period. I know I certainly have. So for today, I just wanted to go through nothing too complicated, uh, but it is a fourth order ordinary differential equation. And now we have done a second order ordinary differential equation on the channel previously, and you'll see many of the same techniques involved with this question. I just wanted to go through this to show you that there is nothing to be scared of when attacking these problems, when there's just a few extra terms in here. All right, with that being said, let's dive right in and let's see what we can do with this problem. Okay, so the first thing that we note is that this is a homogeneous problem. So what that means is that everything is in terms of the function y of x and its derivatives. So we've got dy dx, d2y, dx squared, so on and so forth. And so what that means for us now is we're going to be working with a characteristic equation. So what that means now is that we're going to go through and every time we see a dy dx, we're going to replace that with a lambda. When we see the second derivative, we're going to replace that with a lambda squared. The third derivative, lambda cubed. And the fourth derivative, lambda to the four. Okay, and so once we've done that, we'll just go through and quickly fill out the rest. So we'll have now lambda to the four plus six lambda cubed plus 15 lambda squared plus 20 lambda. And now for our y term, it's actually gonna be plus 12 lambda to the zero. As you might notice, the power is just decreasing by one each time. And so take a guess as to what lambda to the zero is. Well, that's just gonna be one. So that must mean that it's going to be just a plus 12 on the end there. Okay, and we know that that whole thing is going to be equal to zero. Aha, okay, so now that we've reduced our equation into something that we can approach a little bit nicer, what we're gonna do now is we're going to use probably something that you would have covered in high school, the factor theorem. So what the factor theorem states is it says that, well, if you have some function f of x, and that's equal to, let's say, some polynomial, then if you have f of a, some actual number, a numerical value, and that means that you have an answer of zero, then what that means is that x minus a is a factor of that polynomial, okay? So what that means now for us, having a look at this characteristic equation, is that we know, well, those constants, right? Because we know we must just be working with, presumably, four nicely factored terms like this for a fourth order polynomial. It would be lambda plus some constant, lambda plus some constant, lambda plus some constant, so on and so forth, right? And so we know, let's see, to get our 12, well, we know that it must be the constant times by the constant times by the constant times by the constant. So what that says for us now is that those four numbers are all factors of 12. So let's see if we can think of some factors of 12 that when we put into these values of lambda, we'll end up having this equation be equal to exactly zero. Okay, so one thing that we might try here is just getting out your calculator and chucking in the different factors of 12 and seeing what happens. However, I've already had a quick look at this question beforehand. And so I can safely say that if you put in a value where lambda is equal to negative two into this equation, then this equation holds. And we see that one of these factors must therefore be lambda plus two. Okay, so let's see, how will that help us now? So what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to now go through polynomial long division, and that'll allow us to then factorize this massive problem into a few more approachable steps. So let's just quickly fill this out. So now plus 15 lambda squared plus 20 lambda plus 12. Okay, so let's see. What we need to do is now think, well, lambda times what gives us lambda to the four? That's going to be lambda to the power of three. So now we'll say lambda cubed times lambda is lambda to the four. Lambda cubed times two is going to be plus two lambda cubed. Okay, so now when we subtract that from the above terms, let's see what happens. Well, the lambda to the four will cancel out. And now we're just left with a four lambda cubed. And then we'll bring that plus 15 lambda squared down as well. Okay, so now lambda times by what gives us four lambda cubed? Well, that's quite straightforward. So it's gonna be four lambda squared. Okay, and so then we'll say four lambda squared times by lambda, it gives us four lambda cubed plus eight lambda squared. Oops. Again, subtracting, and then we'll end up with a seven lambda squared and we're getting much closer 
And now we have a seven lambda squared. So now we can see that we're just going to chuck a seven lambda up there. And then quickly coming through with this subtraction here, it's going to be a seven lambda squared, then a plus 14 lambda. So that means we'll be left with a six lambda plus 12. So lambda times by six is going to be our last uh, part of that quotient up there. Okay, so, and we know that if we bring that 6 down, we'd end up having a minus 6 lambda and a plus 12 there. And then when you actually take that subtraction, you're left with 0 as expected if we are working with a correct factor. So what that means now is we can rewrite the problem as these two factors here. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that we know that this is going to be all equal to zero, again, it's still not ideal for us to be working with a cubic like this. So again, what we might try doing is again using the factor theorem to see if we can figure out, well, is there another factor to this cubic that we might be able to then take out and use polynomial long division to then simplify this into just a simple linear factor and a quadratic factor. So going through this again, we actually see that the exact same lambda plus two is going to be a factor of this cubic here. So that's going to be our linear factor here. And I'll just quickly run through that long division here. Okay, and so there we have our completely factored cubic into that linear lambda plus two and that quadratic term up here. So now one last step, let's quickly rewrite the original problem as the factored form here. So we'll have lambda plus two lambda plus two and now we have that quadratic so it was lambda squared plus two lambda plus three okay well a quick application of maybe the quadratic formula and you'll be able to see that well we can factorize this now and so let's see what we'll be writing now so instead of writing this out as a quadratic term we can now factorize this into two linear terms so we'll end up with lambda plus one plus square root two i and lambda plus one minus root two i, where i is the imaginary unit, of course. So we can actually use this information to now come up with the final answers to our problem. So from this first term here, so we've got lambda plus two. Well, so we know that when we have a real factor, then we'll end up with some constant times by e to the minus two x. So since we just take the negative of whatever this value is over here, and we chuck that into the exponent with that x value there. Okay, and so that's from the first factored term here. So what about from the second factored term? Well, it's the exact same thing. So all that we do here is in fact, we'll still write some constant, so maybe c2. And now the only difference here is we'll introduce another term of x to it. So now it's gonna be x e to the minus two x. Okay, and so now coming from this, uh, we can also rewrite this in terms of exponentials, and then we'll find that we'll be able to use Euler's formula to then rewrite this out in terms of cosines and sines. So we'll go ahead and skip straight to that. So that's now just going to be some constant, C3, e to the minus x. Let's say cos will come first. So cos of root 2x. And then lastly, we'll have, again, some constant, let's say C4, e to the minus x sine of root 2x. And that is our final solution for what y is going to be equal to. And so there we have it. So if you have enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. And if you do have any other quicker methods uh, to approach this problem, I know there are some quicker methods out there, then please leave a comment detailing how you'd go through it. Uh, I just wanted to mainly show how you can kind of brute force many of these problems uh, just by going through your standard factor theorem and polynomial long division. And as always, I hope you have a great day and stay curious.